Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk to you about the first book that I finished reading in 2018, and it's a book that I'm still thinking about, and I have kind of a book hangover from it, so I thought that I would make a full video about it. And that book is A True Novel by Minae Mizumura. This book is often described as a Japanese retelling of Wuthering Heights, and that's because in the prologue of the book, Mizumura states rather explicitly that part of her project in writing this novel was to rewrite a Western classic in Japanese. I really loved this novel, and it was so much more than I was expecting. It was so rich and layered. So I wanted to talk about some of the key ways in which it's a departure from Wuthering Heights and why those departures make it a great novel in its own right. The first thing I wanted to talk about was the structure of a true novel, because it's pretty interesting and surprising. Wuthering Heights is quite famously a frame narrative wherein Mr. Lockwood relays to you, the reader, Nellie Dean's story of the residents of Wuthering Heights. A true novel takes that frame narrative and adds yet another frame to it. The outermost layer is Minae Mizumura, who is writing this novel and has inserted herself as a character into the prologue. And in this prologue, prologue were introduced to a younger version of Minae Mizumura, who is a teenager living in Long Island in the late 1950s after her family moves to America from Japan. And the prologue follows Mizumura and her family's brief and kind of tenuous acquaintance with a fellow young Japanese immigrant named Taro Azuma. Taro Azuma is the Heathcliff character of this novel, and it's through the fictional version of Minae Mizumura that we learn and hear about his unlikely rise in status and success to become one of the richest Japanese men in America. After a number of years, however, Taro Azuma suddenly disappears and drops off the map, and it's shortly thereafter that a young man named Yusuke seeks out Minae Mizumura and tells her the story of Taro Azuma as told to him by Taro's maid, Fumiko. If you're having trouble keeping up, just hang in there. Ultimately, the bulk of this story is really Fumiko's narration, but her narration really doesn't begin until about page 300, which sounds insane, but if you have the patience for it, this is a deeply nested story that rewards readers and offers new discoveries and revelations as you peel back each layer and get closer and closer to the heart of the narrative. Another key way that Mizumura borrows from Emily Bronte while still creating something of her own is through the characters. A true novel has characters that are very much based on the characters of Heathcliff, Kathy Earnshaw, and Nellie Dean, but where Emily Bronte creates these really powerful and enduring archetypes, Mizumura takes those templates and fills them in with detail and nuance to create very real flesh and blood people who I would say are more sympathetic and also more complicated than their source material. Taro Azuma is this novel's Heathcliff, and like Heathcliff, he is a poor boy of unknown origins who is kind of a perpetual outsider. Like Heathcliff, he carries a chip on his shoulder throughout much of his life, but he's not as vindictive or monstrous as Heathcliff is, and instead the ways in which he has a certain coldness or impenetrability to him is really a result of the cruelty and mistreatment and abuse that he suffers as a child. He's an incredibly striking and mysterious figure that makes for a great central character in this novel, and he also has a kind of gentleness to him that kind of breaks your heart. Yoko is this novel's version of Catherine Earnshaw, and she certainly shares some characteristics with Kathy in that she's somewhat privileged and spoiled, she's a little bit entitled and bratty, but she's also a sort of perpetually sickly girl who's kind of neglected by her parents, and so you can really see why she and Taro bond as children after Taro's family rents a property owned by Yoko's family. But the real highlight of this book is the character of Fumiko, and if you've ever read Wuthering Heights and kind of wondered what is the deal with Nellie Dean and wanted to know more about her story and her background, then this is a book that you definitely have to pick up. 
Fumiko serves as a live-in maid for Yoko's family, and in that way she's able to kind of observe the relationship between Yoko and Taro over the course of several years. Fumiko is certainly as unreliable a narrator as Nellie Dean is, but she's also a much more three-dimensional character than Nellie, and you get glimpses of her early life and how she came to work for Yoko's family, and in that way you have a better understanding of her own dreams and desires and disappointments. You also get a much better sense of her relationships with Yoko and with Taro. She's a few years older than the two of them, but they very much grow up together and grow extremely close to the extent that Fumiko can't untangle herself from their lives even when she wants to. On that note, I would also like to say that the central love story in this novel doesn't have quite the same prominence and force that it does in Wuthering Heights. It's certainly present and it's important important, but it's only one piece of a much larger narrative. This novel is less about the romance between Yoko and Taro and more about Taro and Fumiko and the ways in which their paths continue to collide and diverge over and over again. And I think that's a good thing and allows a true novel to have kind of a much broader scope than Wuthering Heights does. In that sense, I think the most important difference between Wuthering Heights and a true novel are the ways in which the book books frame each character's destiny. Wuthering Heights is a very insular novel that focuses on a small, isolated group of people whose destinies are mostly determined by their own choices. Yes, the English class system and lack of modern medicine plays a role, but for the most part those characters triumphs and disappointments and self-destruction is largely a result of their own individual choices. A true novel, on the other hand, is more outward looking, and it examines the ways in which the characters, despite their efforts to forge their own destinies, are ultimately subject to circumstances and the broader arc of history. History and society and circumstance are powerful forces in this novel. Mizumura looks closely at Japan's post-war economic boom and subsequent bust and the impact that has on individual wealth and opportunity. She looks at the encroachment of westernization and what impact that has on Japanese culture, and she also examines the ways in which nationality, class, education, and gender can determine the course of people's lives. On that level, she does a really interesting thing when it comes to setting up the hero of this novel. This novel is ostensibly about the miraculous rise and fall of Taro Azuma. It's a story of epic proportions, but it's also a story that happens to Taro precisely because he's a man. But if you look closer at the heart of this novel, you realize that this is really the story of Fumiko, a girl born into poverty who rises out of it to serve wealthy families for the majority of her life. She makes a life and space for herself in the limited ways that she can, and I think the sharp contrast between the scope of Taro's life and the scope of Fumiko's life is one of the most interesting dynamics in this book. This isn't a perfect book. The novel spans several decades over the course of several characters' lives, and because of that there are certain sections where long periods of a character's life have to be summarized and relayed to you as the reader in a short amount of space. So those sections get a little exposition heavy. This book also doesn't necessarily have the lyricism or poetic quality that Wuthering Heights has, but the translation is incredibly fluid, so much so that you almost feel carried along by the prose in a way that's really readable and really enjoyable. There's so much to think about and consider in terms of the themes and the ideas that it explores, but it's also just a really compelling and layered and readable story that I already can't wait to revisit again in the future. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!